Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a review for King of Bots Episode 1. For those of you who don't know, King of Bots is the uh, first ever robot combat show to be broadcast in China. So the whole show is in Chinese, Chinese writing, Chinese voices. So there is probably some stuff that I missed in this episode, but mostly you can understand what's going on, one robot versus one robot excitement you know you can sort of see what's happening so upon initial impression i think this show kind of borrows a lot more from battlebots it's got the same sort of arena setup the blue and red corners the little referee outside uh the screws on the side but it's also got some of the robot wars sort of uh things like the, the flame pit and the floor flipper and stuff so it's kind of got a good mix of both um i love these those giant orange like robot looking things sticking out the corners obscuring presumably thousands of people's views uh from the actual fighting but i think they're cool and we have ian lewis of team razor as a judge um uh looking like darren brown um and yeah I just, that's cool as well like like that, that that he is still a part of robot combat even you know like however many years after razor first debuted and you know in a different country amazing Okay, so the fights. First fight we had was uh, Megabyte versus Stingray. You didn't just see me check my notes there for that at all. And it was a really good fight. Um, so, <laughs> as soon as the lights went green and the battle started, the robots had not moved, and the commentators had already started getting all like excited about it, like, whoa! Um, so that was instantly really funny. Um, I just really enjoyed the commentators, like, sort of, again, they borrowed that from BattleBots, the sort of, like, masses of excitement over not much happening yet, and then going super crazy when something does. Yeah, Megabyte was, uh, insanely powerful, like, shearing a spike with, like, that sort of diameter. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the way they kind of slow down, like, the countdown at the end with this, like, slow tempo, like, for extra drama. Um, that was a bit odd, but, um... Pfft. That's the start of presenting, fair enough. Instantly, when they went back in the arena to sort of discuss the fight, there's something very unnerving about the man standing underneath the giant hammer. I know it's entirely completely safe. They, you know, isolated it or whatever, but it's just still very unnerving, <laughs> you know what I mean? Next fight was Vulcan versus Saber. So Vulcan is uh, Team Robots Live. So there's a guy called Ed Wallace on the team, who, uh, when I went to Amberley, uh, he came over and was just chatting away to me. I didn't, uh, shamelessly, didn't know who the guy was. Um, but I, I, yeah, I like this guy, he's a really cool guy, um, and he was sort of talking me through his robot and just generally, you know, being really friendly, so um, it's good to see him on there. And I loved their robot, it looked like a hot rod version of Terahertz, it just looked cool, and that weird, like, raise up thing it could do, I don't really understand why, but I like it. And the robot they were against Saber was, it looked straight out of Thor Ragnarok, it had this weird 80s, like, I don't know, it was such a cool looking robot, um, and that was a really surprising battle, I expected just because of the team, uh, Vulcan, just to kind of walk over the Sabre, but Sabre had a really good robot, actually very well driven. I'm not going to lie, from this point onwards, I did have to look up a lot of the names, because <laughs> they just simply didn't have it written on the robot or whatever. But next up we have Nuclear Bomb versus Gluttonous Snake. Nuclear Bomb had this, this the team had all these, like, like a helmet and this mad robot arm, like, and, uh, yeah, I love the, the, like, the theatrics of that um and their robot was actually quite crap um it did, like the actual battle was kind of poor nothing much really happened gluttonous snake was a sort of uh, like a grab on sort of like a complete control style robot and <laughs> i don't know again the editing really made me laugh here with the way they when when they slammed uh nuclear bomb on the ground uh, they sort of added like a camera shake, you know, like in like an old Linkin Park video or something, um, which in a Linkin Park video I thought was really cool, but here I thought it was lame as hell, but, I, but it, it, again, it all added to the fun of it. They also had this crazy dancing kid on their team when they won, which was good to see. The style then kind of changed a bit, and they kind of cut out a lot of the talking and were just like, here's this robot, here's that robot, oh look, there's their fight, cool, next, here's this robot, and they did that for a couple of fights. Again, I'm going to need my phone for this one. So next up was Mighty Crossbow and Steel Shield versus Storm Dragon. Storm Dragon I would describe as a joke robot. I'm guessing they don't have the same dimension constraints as they do uh, for the rules uh, of Robot Wars, because uh, the dragon thing was like, freaking over six feet tall it was monstrously tall um which was really funny and the other robots just looked like they didn't know what to do with it the cluster bot one of them looked like a sort of little mini eruption um but that was that was quite a cool little team to see and uh, all female which is also really good very progressive that's cool that whole battle was just amazing though just because 
the the commentators were just absolutely pissing themselves laughing. It was just it was just good, and it's good to see that joke robots are still a thing. I think the day that there's a robot combat show where there's no silly robots or gimmicky robots, then that's the day the show dies. You know what I mean? Like, um, and the next sort of really quick battle was oh god, here we go again. God, I love some of these names. Drought War Tiger versus Wild Beast. I'm going to be honest, I couldn't tell you which one of these robots was which in this case, uh, but one of them was a sort of like, well, they're both sort of drum spinners almost. Uh, one had a sort of head, an ornate head thing on it, but the one without the ornate head won. <laughs> but it was a very good performance from the one without the ornate head. Next up we had a, again, they just went back to the original sort of style of like the long intros and describing each robot and stuff, but we had Spectre versus... <clears throat> Flaming Red Decoration, um, which became aptly named because Spectre is phenomenal. Okay, I'm guessing quite a few people fell in love with Spectre at this point. So Spectre is made by Grant and James Cooper, and if you've heard of them, it's because they like were involved in building the house robots for the latest series of Robot Wars. Uh, they were involved with John Reed's Beta, and they also wrote this book, um, How to Build Your Own Robot, the Haynes Manual. Um, so these guys are kind of... They're in the know, um, <laughs> so uh, I love what they've done with Spectre. Like, it's just a gorgeous thing, and it's like, it's finally the kind of upgrade of Razor for the new series, for the new generation of robots that we finally that we wanted for a while. I couldn't work out if the Jaws, like, are they both very strong and very quick? Because they operated like sort of, they did like, Razor was always quite slow, but this one was, you know, clamped down very quickly. Um, maybe the other robot had really poor armor, I'm not sure. And they also had superb driving, you know, grabbing hold of them, holding them over the flames, uh, running them into the screws. Um, it was, that was, it was very cool to see. Uh, the other poor guys didn't really stand a chance, to be honest, like, against this thing. And, uh, yeah, then finally rupturing, I'm presuming, like, the flamethrower, like, the tanks inside, because the whole thing just went up in flames. And then they carried out the, uh, the, the poor victim under, like, a sort of cloth and a very somber thing <laughs> that was truly really funny um but yeah i'm hugely impressed with that thing and it's cool to see again people who are capable of probably building like an insanely destructive spinner saying no there's enough spinners i'm gonna build something a bit different okay and finally the last battle again i couldn't tell you which robot was which um but we had whirlwind cloud breaker oh versus sea wolf Oh, these names are the best. So this was uh, like a kind of carbide-looked style sort of bar spinner um, against this sort of white blob thing, and it was sort of slowly cutting it in half. Um, I this was one of the things where I kind of wish I spoke Chinese because I didn't. There was like a team of old men and then young guys, and I think maybe one of them was like the son, or they were all the sons or something, and then one and then they started sort of crying a bit, and I don't. It seemed very emotional and very powerful. Um, but I've no idea what that, what was going on. But hopefully I didn't miss out too much with that. Um, and it was still, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what was going on. But that was the final battle. So, overall, I adored this show already. Um, I was smiling the entire way through. I love how they're, they're, the whole show, there's a huge sense of fun there. They're obviously all having loads of fun. I noted a uh, good use of uh, score. I heard Transformers in there. I heard a bit of Iron Man 3 score. Um, so, yeah, I like the, the dramaticness of the whole thing. Again, I don't really have any idea what the format is. Like, it was just a load of separate one-on-ones. I, I, I don't know if we're going to... Like, Vulcan, I'd love to see again. No idea if we're going to see it again. Um, we'll just have to wait and see with that. Um, but it's so good to see another whole, like, brand new Robot Combat show out there and it seems really solid really well put together probably just because they kind of nicked most of their ideas from other shows but solid if that works that works i will definitely be watching the second episode uh if it's still up because there was a thing it was on youtube briefly and then they took it down and i was like oh man like i really want to review that but it does seem they do seem to be on the website so far so hopefully they'll stay there and if they do i'll keep reviewing them hope you enjoyed this review Thanks as always for watching guys, and I'll see you hopefully in the next review of this. Cheerio.